Hey guys, welcome to Sunny Bermuda. In today's video, we're gonna spend it in the garage with my Alec Kensington 28 here, right next to my wife's pink bicycle. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover some tips and tricks that I've learned over the past two years of using this little Kensington machine. It's been a great little machine. I picked up a few tips and tricks along the way and I plan to share those with you and hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get started. What better to start off with is the first thing that I actually broke on my little Kensington 20H and that is the, the throttle lever. This is called the throttle lever here. I call it a housing assembly because there's multiple pieces inside of this your cable here that runs down to your Honda engine or your Briggs and Stratton, whichever engine you may have, comes up here and, and inside this plastic housing, this is a plastic housing, but inside this, there's a little washer that holds it. And if you're not careful moving this back and forth, then it could strip the little washer holding it out. And then this actually comes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show, I'm going to take this out. This is how you remove this throttle assembly. Is this one screw. Okay, I just removed the a rather lengthy screw. It looks like, like maybe a four inch. It actually looks like a four inch wood screw. It pops off here fairly easily. And then this housing slides right off. And I'll just you can actually remove that. I'll show you inside here. Let me rotate this. See if we can see that really good in there. See this little washer here? You can see where it bent. So I basically took some pliers, bent it back. In fact, I may have to bend this tip here. See where it's bent right here? Because it fits in this little plastic groove here. But it was a really easy fix. I basically bent it back and took this and slid it back in there and then made sure this was looped in here and that's what controls it and while i have this open i'm going to take some lubricant squirt it down in there that way it runs down the tube here that way it'll it won't offer any resistance as i adjust the throttle so i believe that's what broke it i had some resistance and i pushed this a little too hard and it bent that little metal which caused it to slip out Okay, it moves a lot better now. I put a little, I put a little fluid film in there, which in there is this. Wipe any excess out. Uh, let me take my little pliers here and straighten this further out. There we go. All right. Now it is ready for reassembly. Get my bar, push it back in. All right. And if you notice, see the. You see the play on that? Let me pull this out. See there's some springs in there. That's where that comes from. Basically you push it in and then it snaps back out. There you go. And then we're gonna put this back in. The screw. We'll put it in right here. Very easy fix. Like that. Let's see how smooth it is now. If y'all, if you ever run into any resistance here, make sure you take this apart and look at it up here. Chances are that little washer that's just inside this housing here may be bent. So that's really quick, quick and easy fix. Okay, the next step I'm going to show you is over here on the side. First, first idea is I remove this panel on the right side of the outlet, which shows the how to cut indicator. I'll set it aside. And I want to talk about this for a minute. So you, sometimes you may have a problem, you may hear a rattle, which could be this coming off or broken. That's really easy to replace or fix. It, it basically snaps on right there, which is one of the screws that comes in. One of the four screws that holds the panel in place. Also, if you start having a front roller problem, you might want to check this little clip because this little clip basically is what holds the entire how to cut adjustment in, in place. Okay, but, but while I'm here, I'm going to talk about the 
how to cut knot adjustment adjuster knob because my first season I was scarifying and I rolled it down all the way to the bottom. I don't know if you can see this down in here. It, this is basically a long screw. You see the threads on it? Bottomed out on the screw. And then when I tried to bring it back up, it would not catch and, and pull it back up. So I kept turning and turning and what I ended up doing is I actually loosened this. And then of course I took this apart and I pushed it up so that it would actually get on the thread and then this wasn't working and I was at a loss. So a little tip on this knob here, there is a cover on it. I've had several people ask me about it. I sent them some pictures, usually on Instagram, direct message. You can pry this little cover off. There you go. See? And there is a, a little bolt here. Use a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter right here. Just taking it off. In fact, I got a new one. Let's see, here it is. Here's a brand new one. You can see inside, it's all plastic. So what we're gonna do is replace it. Okay, it's basically a short bolt with a lock washer on it and then a what another washer on top of it and this should slide right off there you go the little ball here the little ball is what clicks so i'm going to try to take this off and put it over here on the new one and let's see what happens I managed to remove the little spring. There's a little spring down here, which put pressure on the little ball right here. And then there's a little washer down there. So I'm just gonna transfer that to the new one over here. I'll put the washer right down in here. All right, you heard it snap in. Put it back down here. All right, let's push the little spring back down in there. And now we should be able to pop this down in there. There you go. You can feel the, feel the play it has on it. Right, and on both sides, there's a rivet here and a rivet here. And what happens is the, as this little ball turns, it clicks it. You can actually hear an audible click on it. And also this new one, it does have some grooves on the inside here. Whereas this one had been basically wallered out from this here from where I kept spinning it. See these grooves on here. So basically, I'm just gonna take this and Pop it on here, take our bolt, put it back in there. Well, that's this tip. We'll put the cover back on it. Oh, like me. All right, now let's move on to the next tip. Okay, this next tip, let's just work our way around the mower. Next tip is based on the how to cut. What really makes it easier to adjust is if you pick up on the mower, let's see the camera here so you can see it. Instead of just turning it and having the full, the full weight of the mower on this front roller, just, just tilt it back a little bit. And, this, and the how to cut adjustment turns so much easier. In fact, you can hear it clicking now where that ball bearing was. That was just a quick, easy tip. Okay, this next tip is on setting the height of cut. Now I do have this handy little diagram here. It's on my website and I'll click a link to this in the uh, description below. But if you're in America, you use uh, inches to measure pretty much everything instead of millimeters, the metric system. So I created this little handy sheet to kind of show you I usually cut at three fourths of an inch right here, which is setting two over here on the side. And as you can see, it's set at right at two and a half. So the, last year I started off 
try, trying several different things. I actually even thought about ordering one of those expensive Accu gauges, like you see the, the green smokers use, where they actually take that bar on the bottom and have a little fancy gauge that measures the height of cut against the bottom of the uh, bed knife. But what I did first, I lean my mower back. Let me get two hands here. I lean it back like this. And then I would take a, basically a straight edge. You guys see like this level here. And I would do this. And then I would take a, a ruler. All right, I mean the tape measure, the measure like this. As you can see, it's reading right at an inch. Yeah, right at one inch. I was on the verge of ordering one of those fancy Accu gauges, but then I realized the front roller here actually moves. So watch this. You see the little play there. See how much it moves up and down. And I was like, well, that's not really an accurate height of cup measurement tool to use an Accu gauge or really that. So what I went to, this may seem a little odd, but these are Sunny's tips. <laughs> They're not sponsored by anyone in particular. Well, none of my videos are. What I have here is my Sunny's how to cut adjustment. It's a little measure, a little metal, a little metal stick. It measures up six inches. I use that and then the, I use these. I created some cards to do my paper test. What this is, these are in the woodworking area. And they're precision measuring instruments. If we put it on three, right there, this is exactly three fourths of an inch. I mean, half an inch, my bad. And then if we take another one, lay it on there. See the three, right there. See if I moved it, it was right there on the line. So it's exactly three fourths of an inch. So I figured with the mower sitting flat on a level surface, which is in my garage here, it would be a more accurate measurement. Whereas where I tilted it back and I used a level or something on this that, that has a, I'd say it has about a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch flex on it, which I assume is by design by Allet on a home, on this homeowner's model. So what I do is I'll take this three fourths of an inch and I'll basically slide it under here. You see it slid up on it's actually slid under the bed knife. That means I need to lower it. I'm twisting the knob. Let's see, uh, I was twisting it the wrong way. Yeah. Let's see, it's almost there. There you go. Now you can see the top of the bed knife right here is almost perfectly level with my measuring bar there. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll take this metal rod and you hear that? I'm hitting the bed knife. So we're gonna come down a little more. Okay, now sliding over the top. So it's perfectly level. Pull these back out. You can also use your finger or fingernail. Slide it in there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you slide over there. That's perfect. So that I know that sitting flat on a level surface, the top of that bed knife all the way across is three fourths of an inch from the ground. All right, the next little tip here is has to do with the turf rake, which sits here right here behind the behind the front roller. I've already loosened it, as you can see. And what it does, it takes a 13 millimeter bolt here, a 13 millimeter. And what you want to do is you want to set your turf rake just like an eighth of an inch. I believe that's in millimeters, that's two to three mil, which is about one eighth of an inch below your height of cut. So my height of cut is at three fourths of an inch. So I'm going to just lower it at a half. So again, I'm gonna grab my little half inch bar here. We will slide it under here. But what we'll do is we'll lift this up. 
and it fits right on top of the half inch. So what it is, so what this turf rake will do is it'll lift the grass up an eighth of an inch. You know, it's just below the height of cut, so it'll basically kind of lift it, lift it up. That way the, the uh, that way the reel can cut it. So now we're going to take it and tighten it up over here on the side here. Set. Now take this measuring bar out. Now we got the high to cut set on the reel and also our turf rake set. So we're ready to move. No wait, that leads to me to the next tip. Okay guys, now we're gonna move under the mower to the actual paper test as we call it. We call it a paper test. And what I found to do is a average sheet of paper like this notebook paper is 0 0.004 inches supposed to be I mean depend, I'm sure it depends on all your on your weighted paper like this I think my wife buys the more expensive 20 pound paper some people have 24 pound paper 28 pound I guess the more I think the higher pound of weight the thinner the paper is but regardless what you want you want your reel here to be you don't want it to hit your bed knife and I've seen a lot of people they post videos on Facebook you know the, is my mo is my outlet supposed to sound like this and it has some severe knocking noise because I've had it before too so I know what it sounds like when I first got the mower I, I tended to over tighten it and I get that knocking noise so then I back the screws off the adjustment screws you know up here I back these back off and then it would quit so, so when you run this it's supposed to sound smooth smooth as paper I mean you've probably seen it on my Instagram page there's no knocking and what you could do I actually like to do a paper test with a small with a thin business card and I have, it, I have these made on, on, online somewhere and I have like 500 of them. So I use these to do my paper test across. It's a little thicker than 0 0.004 inches, but so is grass. I mean, I, I deal with Bermuda. I mean, if you do cool season, you might have a different story. You could probably go rip up some grass and just use grass to do your cut test. And that'd probably be the best thing to do is rip up a few blades. You can also get the not sure what this is called but i'll leave a so basically a thickness indicator and this is 0 0.05 millimeter which according to a little conversion chart 0 0.05 millimeter is similar to 0 0.002 inches so, which is the distance you want your bed knife to be to your reel and i'll put that down here 0 0.002 inches and what you can do let me set my camera up here and I'll show you. You can actually lay it on top of your bed knife here. And then as you turn it, it should scrape it, but not cut it. As you see, see it just scraped right over it. Didn't harm it. In fact, you can see the fluid film on it that I put on my mower every time, before every mow. That, that gives it a nice fluid film cover and protect it from rust, especially down here in the south. I'm in Alabama right here, and anytime you have metal exposed, it'll rust, as you can tell by my rear roller here and also my front roller. You see the rust on it. In fact, sometimes I'll take my fluid film and actually rub it on there to try and mediate the, any further corrosion. Anyway, back to this reel. What you want to do is you want to take this and you want to lay it all the way across there and then turn it let's do that right here lay it up here Ooh, i heard it hit let's try that again oh there it goes <laughs> how's that paint and i i do have a tip i don't know if it'll play before or after this tip i had to prevent this powder coated paint from peeling off there's a small piece there but yeah you want to do this all the way across do it on the middle here because pallets tend to have a will tend to comb there it just went across it as you can see the fluid film on it it's kind of a rust colored 
Yeah, you swap it off. But I could tell when it went across it, it went across a little closer to the middle. So you want to keep an eye on that. I mean, the bed knife only has two screws. You got one, two on this Kensington model. I wish there was like several screws on it here. But I think it maybe have some type of, it's not perfectly level, I don't think. That's why it actually hits here. Or it could be the reel itself. But regardless, do that. Try and find you some from this metal. I call it metal paper, but I'll put the correct term on the screen here and down in the description where you can get it. 0 0.05 millimeter, which is equivalent to 0 0.002 inches. That's the proper distance you want between the bed knife and the reel. And then you take your paper test or you can grab some grass. If you use paper, like notebook paper, usually a high, a high weight notebook paper, I'd recommend folding it in half. See, cut. Cut. I'll move over here. Cut. So, so I know it's, it's pretty even all the way across. That way when I come out Bermuda, it's going to be a perfect cut. Okay, on this next tip, I just put in my Scarifier cartridge to show you this tip. I have a lot of cartridges. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, six total cartridges. And the only this one is the only one I've seen this on. I don't know if the engineer kind of goofed up when he did measured the actual width of the cartridge but i've seen this online too so i thought i'd share it just in case but as you can see here it doesn't quite line up here so when you take your screw and you try to put it in it won't it won't catch the screw hole here for it so what you'll have to do is and it's real simple no need to send your cartridge back or your mower back to the outlet what you do is you take your hand and you just you see how it flexes a little if you can see that, let me get the camera just right. Okay, see it kind of flexes. You can actually squeeze it and then it'll catch. And then you just take your screw and screw it on in and put your other side in over here and you're good to go. And I've only noticed that on the Scarifier cartridge. Not the brush, not the six blade, the 10 blade wheel or the Verticut, it all went in smoothly and screws went in fine. It's just for some reason the Scarifier cartridge Maybe it has something to do with the cartridge when they designed it. As you can see, I just dropped my six blade back in and it lines up a whole lot better here on the side. So when I put my screw in, it'll engage into the, the uh, welded in nut here. So I don't know if it's all Scarify cartridges or just, I got the luck of the draw, me and maybe a few other people, I don't know. But just a tip I thought I'd share. Okay, this next tip is, I'll just be quick. I believe I included this tip in the complete motor maintenance when I did the engine. I'll leave a link to that up here in the corner, but it's basically your belts. Keep them good in condition. As you can see, it's pretty dusty in there now. I need to blow all this out, but apply some belt conditioner. It'll keep, it'll extend the life of your belt and really help them hum along. I mean, you can tell the difference if you have it, if you've never used this, first time you use it, you engage your reel and also your drive belt and you'll be like, wow, that really made a difference. So make sure you use some belt conditioner. I won't show putting it on there again, but just a quick tip. In this tip, I'm gonna show you how to take care of your reel and, and try and prevent this from happening. See all the, the paints peeling off. And then this up here, this is the 10 blade reel. It looks really good. I haven't used it quite as much as my other six blade, my newer six blade, but this, but this is my old one. And so first thing I'm gonna show you is, see how, listen to how that turns, you hear it? Okay, now if we look at this one, I intentionally washed this in my la in one of my last videos. I'll put a link up here to it. I think it's my super clean video of how to keep it clean and all. And then I, I didn't treat it. It needs a professional grind on it, but listen to this. Okay, now let me show you how to how to fix that and also help protect your reel and keep the paint from chipping off. Okay, I've got my old reel on this little table here. And what I recommend guys is use this fluid film. It's a powerful rust and corrosion protection and it'll really keep your reel in top notch. Well, not this one. I wish I'd used it last year. Last year I didn't use anything on my reel. So this, I'm gonna apply this. What I do is I apply it to the edge of the each blade 
just grab a cloth, spray it down, and just rub it on the beach blade. And then also I take, take it and rub it across the bed knife here. Okay guys, I've got this one wiped down with my with my fluid fluid film. Now remember the squeaking of it you heard earlier? Now now listen to it. Almost sounds like my tin blade reel. So if you keep this done, keep it covered in the good old fluid film, I believe your paint job as well as your reel will last a whole lot longer. I'm gonna have to box this one up and send it off, get it professionally ground and be nice if they repainted it but if not I'm not sure what I'll do but I'll probably, I, may, I may just paint it myself all right guys I hope you guys enjoyed all these little tips and tricks I shared with you guys on this Alec Kensington yeah, here you go Alec Kensington 20H uh, quite a few tips be sure you go I uh, made sure I bookmarked them that way if you want to rewatch it you can click the little bookmark and jump back to it in time or rewatch them but if you enjoyed these tips be sure and hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions about the tips you saw today, be sure and let me know. We'll see you guys in the next one.